Hey everybody, Matthew Chapman here, Matthew Chapman Ministries. Once again, I count it an honor and a privilege to be preaching and ministering the Word of God before you tonight. I know it's around 9.30ish, and uh, normally I would go a little earlier, but you know, recently been having a lot going on, so I've been having to go on late. So I just appreciate everybody who's going to be watching me live, and I appreciate everyone who's listening to me via podcast, to people who listen to me via SoundCloud. I just appreciate all the support and all the love that I've been getting from a lot of people over the last few months. We just give God all the praise, honor, and glory for what he's been doing through this ministry. And we just thank God that we're going to continue to go from glory to glory. I want to give a shout out to Pastor Travis Newkirk. And I want to thank him for allowing me to minister at this great church, Centrifuge Church. Awesome church. You know, they had, they had actually met. One last time at the elementary school, and they're going to be moving to their new facility on next Sunday. So I just rejoice with him for the great things that God is doing in his life. We had an excellent time on yesterday. And once again, I just want to thank him for the opportunity. And uh, on yesterday, as I was ministering the word of God, one of the things that I kind of touched on, but I didn't go into a lot of detail, was I was kind of talking about the inner image. And I don't even think I really put it that way. But I kind of talked about the fact how God had to change Abraham's image. He had to change Abraham's thinking because Abraham had a mindset that was contrary to God's mindset because God told Abraham, he said, you are a father of many nations. God told him that you were going to be a father of many nations. I'm going to make a great nation out of you, etc." And Abraham was saying, I don't know about all that. Matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 15, we're going to look at it. In Genesis, 15, Genesis chapter 15, Abram at this time, God hadn't changed his name yet. Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? Now, now this is what I want to focus on. Seeing. Abraham saw himself as childless. Now, my question to you today is, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as broke? Do you see yourself as always going to be poverty stricken? Do you see yourself as being middle class? How do you see yourself? Because God saw Abraham as a father of a great nation. Abraham saw himself as childless. Now, just to strengthen my point, let's look at Genesis chapter 18. And this is the 18th verse. Now, this is God talking. And what he wants to do, he wants to disclose he wants to disclose to Abraham what he was about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah. And in verse 18 of chapter 18, this is what God says. God says, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Now, what I want you to notice is God said that Abraham is going to become a great and mighty nation. That's what God said. Abraham said, hey, God, what will you do for me seeing I go childless? So what we have here is two different mind frames right now, two different mindsets right now. God is saying, you're a mighty nation. Abraham is saying, hey, I'm childless. So what Abraham has to do is Abraham has to change his mindset. Abraham has to change his inner image in order to match God's inner image or not even his inner image, but to match God's thoughts. Now, remember last week, and I want to read the scripture from last week, Isaiah 55, 8, 9 from the New Living Translation. It says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. Now, Abraham is childless. And God is saying, you're going to be a father of a great nation. You're, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. God is thinking great nation. Abraham is thinking, I'm fatherless. Not fatherless. <laughs> I'm sonless. I don't have a son. Right? Abraham's thought is totally contradictory, in total contradiction to God. God is saying, you're a mighty nation. Abraham is saying, I don't have any seed. I don't have any children. And so what Abraham has to do now is he has to change his mind to be on the same level, to be on the same, uh, the same note, to be on the same key, to be on the same wave as God. Because right now they're not on the same page. And many of you today, 
You and God are not on the same page right now. Right now, God is saying to you, you're a king and a priest. Right now, God is saying, I made Jesus poor so that him through his part, that, that you through his poverty can be rich. God sees you as wealthy. God sees you as the healed. God sees you as the redeemed. God has said that he has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. God has said he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has said you're blessed. God has said I have given you all things. God says all things are yours. And what you're saying is we'll never make it. What you're saying is we always run out of money. What you're saying is the doctor said. What you're saying is my job only pays this amount of money. And so what you have to do, my friend, you have to change your internal thermostat. And see, in the natural world, in the academic world, what they talk about is they talk about the fact that everybody has a financial thermostat. And what they mean by that is that on the inside of you is that everybody has an idea. Everybody has a mindset. Everybody thinks that they can make a certain amount of money. Okay. For example, Donald Trump is a billionaire. And so because Donald Trump is a billionaire, his, in, his internal thermostat is set on billions. If he was to make or if he was to become a millionaire, then that would be outside of his thermostat. And so what he has done is he has brought his financial thermostat to a point where he can't see himself with anything less than billions of dollars. He identifies himself as a billionaire and nothing's going to change that. Matter of fact, at one point in Donald Trump's life, he lost all his money. At one point in his life, he went bankrupt. But because of his internal thermostat, because of what he learned and because of the things that he learned over the years that made him a billionaire, he would only be bankrupt for a little bit. It would only be a matter of time before he would become a billionaire again. And so what I'm saying to you is that we have to find out on the inside, what's our internal thermostat? You see, there are people who win the lottery and on the inside of themselves, they're poor. They don't see themselves as wealthy. They don't see themselves as having a lot of money. They don't see themselves in abundance. On the inside, they're poor, but on the outside, they hit that lottery and they become instant millionaires. But you know what happens after 10 years? You know what happens after 15 years? Sometimes it's less than 10 years. They go right back to their original state. What they do is they go right back to being poor. And a lot of times people wonder, well, how is it that they had all those millions of dollars and now they're poor again? How is it they can go through so many millions of dollars? People ask about professional athletes. How is it that that professional athlete can go through all those millions of dollars? Mike Tyson in the past. I believe he lost, he made $300 million and ended up going bankrupt. And people say, how is it that you can go through hundreds of millions of dollars? Because on the inside, his internal thermostat was set at maybe thousands of dollars. It might've been set at hundreds of dollars. Maybe his internal thermostat was set on poverty. And so what we, what we have to do is, if your internal thermostat is set on poverty, you have to change the thermostat. If I'm sitting in a room and it's hot, and I desire for the room to get cooler, I got to adjust the thermostat to the temperature that I want it to be on. And for many of us, we are desiring a change in our finances. We are desiring a change in our health. We are desiring a change in our relationships. Well, if you're going to experience that change, you got to change the thermostat. What is your thermostat set on? Because if you're like Abraham, Abraham's thermostat was set on being childless. And your thermostat might be on poverty. Your thermostat might be on sickness. Some of you, maybe you're on blood pressure medicine. For some of you, maybe you, you might be on dialysis. Maybe you're dealing with some kind of sickness in your body. And the bottom line is the doctor's report has set your thermostat. What you have to do is, is the same thing Abraham had to do. He had to adjust his thermostat and he had to adjust his mindset to God's mindset. See, the only way to change your outer world is the first you got to deal with your inner world because your outer world is a correlation of your inner world. You have to become wealthy on the inside before you become wealthy on the outside. You have to see yourself wealthy on the inside. You have to see yourself successful. You have to see yourself healthy. You have to, if like, like one time I remember brother Copeland, Kenneth Copeland was talking about one time how if a person was in a wheelchair and he was believing God for a miracle or she was believing God for a miracle, that person would have to see themselves out of that wheelchair. If you're bedridden, you have to see yourself up. You have to see yourself helping your family. You have to see yourself working again. So you have to get that inner image on the inside. The Bible talks about 
how Jesus went to the pool of Bethesda. And when he went to that pool of Bethesda, there was a man who had been laying there. And, and the Bible says that Jesus went to that man and said, would you like to be made whole? And you know what that man did was that man made excuses. That man talked about how when the angel comes to trouble the water, somebody steps in ahead of him. And therefore, because somebody steps in ahead of him, he can't get healed. So on the inside of himself, he didn't see himself as being healed. He just saw himself as helpless. And Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Jesus was addressing the inner man because when that man got up on the inside, he got up on the outside. And so when you get up on the inside, when you change your inner thoughts of yourself, the reason why the Israelites did not experience a promised land is because they had the wrong image of themselves. They told the people, the spies told the people, they said, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. The people didn't see them as grasshoppers. That's how they saw themselves. And so what God had to do, unfortunately, was that whole generation that would not grab a hold of the promises of God, they had to die out in the wilderness. And it wasn't God's fault. It was the people's fault. They would never grasp what God was trying to give them. And so it had to take a whole nother generation to finally attain the very thing that God wanted them to have. And we don't want to be like those Israelites that fell in the wilderness. We want to be like Joshua. We want to be like Caleb. Give me my mountain. And so in order for us to attain the wealth, in order for us to attain that health, in order for us to attain the relationships that we desire, the, the, the blessings, the, the things, uh, you know, God prospering the works of our hands. In order for us to experience that, we have to change our inner image. You know, a lot of times. In the NBA or in the NFL, a lot of guys, when it comes down to, to the final seconds of a game, you know, in basketball, it's 10 seconds left in the game. A lot, of, a lot of guys, they don't want the ball at the end of the game because on the inside of themselves, they don't see themselves making the shot. On the inside of themselves, they don't see themselves creating a shot for somebody else by getting to the basket and drawing the defense. They don't want the ball at the end of the game because they can't see themselves as making that last shot. They don't want to be on the free throw line at the end of the game with no time left, down one, shooting two free throws. Because on the inside of themselves, they're not confident enough in themselves. They're not confident enough in their abilities to make the free throws. So on the inside of themselves, they don't see themselves doing it. And so therefore, because they don't see themselves as winners on the inside, because they don't see themselves having that killer instinct, because they don't see themselves as being the one who, puts, who wants to put the dagger in the other team, therefore, they don't want the ball. Therefore, they'll turn the ball over or they'll miss both of the free throws or they'll you know, miss the shot. Why? Because of their inner image. And so what a lot of those guys have to do is they have to get psychologists, sports psychologists, to take them through different mental exercises so that they can overcome those mental roadblocks. So that they can see themselves as being successful, see themselves as being that assassin who can handle the ball under pressure at the end of the game. A lot of players, all they need is to make an adjustment on the inside. And that's what God had to do with Abraham. Let's see what God did with Abraham. Let's look at Genesis chapter 18. Well, but it's 17. The Bible says in Genesis, well, let's go back to 15. Genesis 15, I'm sorry. Genesis 15 in verse 5, this is what God said to Abraham. He says, look now toward heaven and number the stars. Tell the stars if you be able to number them. And he said to them, so shall your seed be. So the first thing God did to Abram or Abraham was he told him, look at the stars. I want you to get a different image. And a lot of times when it comes to, you know, um, People listen to motivational speakers and, and self-help gurus and things of that nature. What they'll tell you is they'll tell you to get you a, a vision board. What they'll tell you is, you know, if you're not living in the house that you desire to live in, if you're not driving the car that you desire to drive, if you're not working on the job that you desire to have, they'll tell you to cut out pictures and put them on a wall. Or they'll tell you to have a, uh, a notebook. And what you do is if you desire you know, a Lamborghini, then you put a picture of the Lamborghini in a book or you post it on the wall. And then what you do is you have a vision board or a vision wall. And what they'll tell you is you look at that vision board every day. You look at that vehicle every day. You look at that house every day. You look at, at, at that, uh, that occupation that you truly desire. You look at that picture. You know, if a young person wanted to be an NFL player, they'll tell you, they'll tell that young person, cut out a picture of that NFL player and look at it every day. 
Why? Because now you're developing a picture on the inside. Now what you're doing is you're seeing yourself driving that luxury car. You're seeing yourself living in that house. You're seeing yourself, you know, on that new job. You're seeing yourself with the promotion. But what's happening? You're perfecting the image. You're changing the image on the inside because your inner world will change your outer world. Your outer world will eventually correspond with your inner world. If you want to change the fruit, you got to change the root. If you want to change the visible, it starts with the invisible. It, you know, your words, you can't see your words, but your words are powerful. You can't see faith, but faith is having an impact on your natural world. And so what we have to do is like, just like God did with Abraham, God told Abraham, look at the stars. Stop looking at your body. Stop looking in the mirror. Stop looking at your wife. What you got to do, Abraham, you got to change your image. So what I want you to do, I want you to look at the stars. And then you know what else I'm going to do for you, Abraham? And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 17, verse 5, God said this. He says, your name will no more be Abram, but your name will be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you. So now what God is saying now is you got to start calling yourself a father. So every time Abraham heard his name, he heard you're a father of a multitude, father of a multitude father of a multitude. And I mean, you, there's no telling how many times Abraham heard his name in a day. He might have heard his name 20 times. He might have heard his name 30 times. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And every time he heard his name, he heard father. And hey, Abraham, I need this. Hey, Abraham, your wife needs you. Hey, Abraham, I got a question for you. Hey, Abraham, hey, Abraham. And every time Abraham heard his name, faith came. Every time Abraham heard his name, he was like, that's right. I'm a father. I'm a father. And you know what happened? He kept hearing I'm a father. He kept looking to the stars. And you know what happened? His image changed on the inside. He started to see himself as a father. He started to see himself as having children. He started, He no longer was concerned about Sarah. He was no longer concerned about his physical body. Abraham's image changed because he changed his name.